Welcome aboard the Britannia stateroom on Cunard's Queen Mary 2, the last great ocean liner that's still going in the world. We're here, we managed to get on board the celebration cruise for the coronation, which was a bit of a bun fight to get on. The site broke down, phone lines had problems. Literally, in the end, we only managed to get on thanks to a stand-in agent, because Sarah, a normal travel consultant, was out of office. Mimi was standing in for it. She managed to phone her friend in the marketing department and get us on board. So thanks ever so much, Mimi. We really appreciate that. Yesterday, I'm doing this just after lunch on day two. So yesterday was embarkation day and it went really, really smoothly. We went out the QE2 terminal and last time we were there was boarding a princess cruise where they had had problems with the gangplank. So we were there to board at 11 a.m. and they were still trying to get everyone off. So they were directing us to stand and wait in an area where all the people were trying to get off the ship. It was absolute chaos. Well, it was a completely different story today. Uh, yesterday. Turned up at the terminal, we had very little turnaround notice for this, so we just booked CPS parking, dropped the car off, walked about 50 steps, handed in a case, and then straight into the terminal, where it was split into two lanes. There was a priority lane, if you have QNERD status, because you're a world, I think they call it World Voyage uh, Club or something. So if you've already got status with them, you could go down this priority lane. Otherwise, you had to go down the normal lane. And to be honest, the normal lane, the queue was shorter and moving quicker than the priority one. So we were through the queue in five minutes. To the desk, straight into security, apart from one person in front of us at the machine, straight through security as well. We actually spent longer waiting on the ramp to board the ship than we did in the terminal because there was quite a queue in front of us as they were processing people onto the ship. So thumbs up, full marks for the embarkation process. We're not used to getting our cruise card when we were already on board the ship, um, but we knew that was coming, so that was fine. When you get to your cabin, little envelope behind your door with a seal on the back and your cards in there. So we got our cards, got in the room, and it is great. It's, a, it's one of the holes, as people call them. It's a sheltered balcony all the way down on deck four. We're midships on the starboard side in cabin 4069. It's a nice room, there are a couple of niggles with the room. Um, I've put a short up earlier, I don't know if you've seen it, but the door, balcony door doesn't shut properly. Uh, if I wasn't using the lapel mic now, you would clearly hear it whistling in the background. We had a quick walk around the atrium and it just wow it's what a ship it's so different to the experience of boarding things like princess and msc which we've also done uh, msc you've got that take your breath away moment where you walk in you're in the middle of the gallery of virtuosa with that huge video dome above your head here you walk in you're in the grand atrium and I think the best way to describe Queen Mary 2 and the experience of boarding it is opulence and indulgence. You walk in, there's this huge, I'll put a picture up now, huge um, liner up on the wall with there's some balconies facing in that you can see that. There's the ship's bell right in front of you. And then you walk down these corridors that are lined with embossed panels, which just look amazing. You get a very different feel walking through this ship than you do through other ships. It's elegance, it's opulence, and yes, definitely indulgence. It's, I put some pictures up on my normal personal Facebook. 
last night on um, one of the comments from one of my friends was oh how the other half live and and you certainly get a feeling of that here it's it's not a standard that we're personally used to for sure we went and found somewhere quiet to sit we ended up in the corinthia lounge we sat down there had a drink uh it was that strange time because we boarded uh two o'clock wasn't it trace yeah, two we had a two to three boarding window. We were literally on board about ten past two. By the time we had got up to the cabin, put our stuff down, um, it was about half to three o'clock because we had to do the muster, which is an e-muster. So you watch on your stateroom TV a brief uh, video then you have to go find your muster station, which happens to be in the Corinthia Lounge for us. So, bang on. Had a beer. Decided what we were going to do for the rest of the day then. And basically took it easy, just had a bit of a wander. Looked at the Daily Planner. Uh, we went to Britannia, the Britannia restaurant, main dining, uh, came back to the room, got changed. Um, and then went to the Britannia dining room for dinner. People have talked a lot about the dress code on QNAD. And we'll find out more about that today. Because today is formal or gala night. Uh, black and white themed night tonight. So we'll find out a bit more tonight about how strict they are. But last night, um, after having a drink, we came back to the cabin, got changed. Uh, I just went with plain black trousers and a sparkly top. Tracy had a colourful blouse and black trousers. And that was fine. We didn't feel there was any judgement in the dining room going in. We didn't feel that we really, really had to make an effort. But I will point out that on this particular cruise, they appear to have slightly adjusted the dress code standards because we were led to believe that the dress code for gentlemen always included a jacket for dinner. Um, that wasn't in the daily planner yesterday. It was just a shirt and tidy trousers, no ripped jeans or anything like that. And there were certainly people in the dining room in um, unripped jeans last night. There was also people at the other end in full suits, um, no tuxes, but full suits, collars, ties, everything. Uh, tie was optional for blokes. So we had a lovely dinner. So for the mains, I've gone for the grilled steak Diane, and Tracy's gone for the medallions of pork. And they both look lovely. So in total, we had a pre-booked sitting at the restaurant. Even though we're on open dining, they reserve you a seating on the first day. That was 6.15, but we were told the maitre d' would be there at 6. Being bigger, I wanted to go and see the maitre d' to make sure we could get a table where I didn't have arms on the chairs. That was fine. We sat down about 5 past 6. We were out of there about 10 past 7. Service was speedy, food was good. Off to get a drink in Sir Samuel's, because uh, the bar opposite the chart room, I think it's called, was full. But we could see, sit opposite in Sir Samuel's and they'll bring drinks over for us. Ordered drinks, they walked off with Tracy's cruise card, which is normal on Cunard. They'll walk away with your cruise card, bring back a little folder, with a slip in it for you to sign, even if you're on the drinks package and the bill is zero, they will still normally bring you back a slip to sign. So they brought it back and Tracy looked at the slip and it had a price on it, which didn't look right because we, oh, we did buy the drinks package this cruise just because we thought we'd get through some drinks. And she's like this doesn't look right looked at the card and they had actually given us someone else's cruise card and bill with our drinks so 
we had our drinks and then we spent 10 minutes trying to attract the attention of any of the waiters to get them to come and solve this. Because after all, we're sat there with someone else's cruise card, which is the key to their room, their credit card, for want of a better term, to buy stuff in any of the shops. And for all we knew, someone else was sat there with Tracy's card. After 10 minutes, Tracy gave up, walked off, talked to one of the waiters who was very relaxed about it, said, I'll get it sorted now. I'll get my colleagues to sort it. Then spent about 10 minutes serving other people in the bar before going and talking to anyone to resolve it. Um, eventually, we got our cruise card back, got our drinks, walked into the theatre, and just as we're looking for somewhere to sit down, all the lights go out because it's showtime. Luckily, we managed to get in on the corner of somewhere and it was fine. So the show last night was a lady, I've forgotten her name, a violinist playing all sorts of music from around the world. And it's not the sort of thing would normally go out of our way to go and watch. But on a cruise, we, try to ten, uh, we tend to try different things like this. It's not costing us. So if we go into a show and we don't like it, we haven't spent £45 each for tickets. We can just, no, oh, well, that went too good or whatever, and walk out without worrying. But we thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a great show. The lady was entertaining. She'll play one or two songs. It, would, it varied from classical numbers, like um, she did air on a G-string, to upbeat British um, show tunes and things like that, which was probably integrated into the show as part of this Coronation Cruise. But yeah, great evening in the theatre. After that, we tried to decide what to do, settled on, neither of us fancied walking around the ship too much, but we wanted to find a nice quiet lounge to sit in. So we went up to the Corinthia lounge again, which has always been We've never had any trouble finding a seat there every time we've been, even if other areas of the ship are busy. Um, as we walked in, they were in the middle of a Royal Shakespeare Company themed quiz where all the questions related in some way to Shakespeare. Um, but some of them were quite quirky in ways that you wouldn't have thought. So uh, you had things like which Doctor Who played a Shakespearean character at a certain occasion, uh, which metal band referenced Shakespeare in one of their hits, uh, which country singer did something in one of their songs, and things like that. It was fun. We hung around. There was another quiz starting an hour later, so we stayed for the Welcome Aboard trivia, which was more general trivia. It was good fun. We do like a quiz sat there, had a couple of drinks and um, waited for the late night snack buffet to open at 11. Popped along to King's Court and at first we were a bit confused because on the deck plan King's Court is like one area and we walked into that area, big open square self-serve catering area in the middle and it was all blocked off. Uh, nothing being served there at all. So we walked all the way through and we're like, have we come too far now? And then there's another area which is also apparently King's Court. And as we're walking past that, we started to smell food. So we popped in there, got some late night snacks. Um, the late night snacks were a little disappointing, if I'm honest. The... Um, I had uh, some variation on a chicken, Kiev, only instead of being garlic butter in the middle, it was uh, ham. It was very dry, um, really could have done with some sauce. And um, also just had a bit of baguette with some cheese on it, and that was nicer than the, um, the chicken. On the way out, help myself from the soft serve machine to a cone and that was the highlight of the late night snacks for me was 
cone of ice cream. So that was day one. Stay with us and we'll have the next vlog up shortly covering day two, which is what we're on now. And yeah, there's already some slightly critical things because like I said, Tracy didn't sleep last night because of the door. Um, but other than that, we're enjoying the cruise. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.